Hey, Zenithians, Tenvarian here, with a professional guide on the most disgusting class in the game, the Blademaster Tank. With this class pushed to its near maximum potential, I'm pulling kill speed times on endgame bosses solo that no one has yet to beat. Before we get into the meat of the guide, I'll show off some footage of what you'll be capable of with applying this knowledge. Here, I'm soloing the endgame invasion boss in Galleon Valley. This boss is intended to be killed with a group of level 40s, and I'm able to kill it at insane speed solo by applying all the mechanics that will be covered in this video. Before you watch this video, it's imperative that you understand and can apply all the overarching Blade Master mechanics that I showcase in my past video shown here. So please, watch this first if you haven't already, and come back to continue the guide. The Blade Master tank is capable of dishing out insane amounts of DPS due to our quick ability to regenerate raids. We can hold aggro over any Essence Mage tank, and we have enough sustain through healing at our fingertips to solo content that most would die to. In this guide, I'll be going over all the godstones that allow us to do this, each of their minor and major upgrades to look out for. We'll go over rage regeneration, our healing capabilities, where we get all of our damage from, and finally, at the end, I'll show you how to put that all together in an applicable rotation. First, let's jump into the core of the guide, our godstone selections. Fast footwork, by far, is the better choice over Into the Fray, due to the amount of extra mobility we get. This dash has a 4 second cooldown in comparison to Into the Fray, which has a 8 second cooldown. Fast footwork also gets 2 charges of this ability. All of this allows us to have a dash available almost every time we need it. Use this dash to dodge incoming telegrams and attacks, as well as creating a gap in between you and your enemies when you need a second to breathe. Not only do we get all these combat benefits, but overall, travel times will be cut drastically, as this ability gives us a 25% movement speed buff for 4 seconds. If you're familiar with fast flying techniques, ensuring your 25% movement speed buff is active when you flight cancel will make you incredibly faster than those without the buff. For fast footwork, the major upgrade you're looking for is Inspiration. This regens 50% of our entire rage pool over 10 seconds with a 30 second cooldown. The minor upgrades that you want are going to be cooldown reduction as a priority. Next, let's look at our downward cadence. For this, Bonk will be our choice for really long single target fights. These are fights like the world boss. Bonk increases the stagger duration when stagger is reached. Each activation of Bonk will increase the stagger duration by 10% up to a maximum of 100%, meaning the stagger time is doubled. Doubling the stagger duration on the world boss is equivalent to doubling the total damage dealt during stagger. To give an example, during the world boss, the number one strat is for Blademaster DPSs to stack Sunder increasing the base 200% damage during stagger up to well over 1000%, sometimes even 2000%. If a tank doubles this duration, this effectively means you're doubling whatever the Blademaster DPS Sunder value is. For Bonk, take the unique Major upgrade that gives 10% armor for 10 second on activation if this actually works. Otherwise, Dyad or Firebrand are great picks. For the minor, take Power Scaling or Crit Chance. Next, we'll discuss our horizontal cadence, Cleave. Cleave should be taken over Defender's Crest for the extra 10% flat damage boost it has in comparison to Defender's Crest. Defender's Crest would be our choice if the Unique Major actually worked, 
which grants us stamina per target's hit. And if the armor value was larger than a flat 20, regardless of amount of mobs hit or level. Cleave will also help with our rage regeneration, as each target it hits generates rage, rather than only gaining rage on a single target hit like combo or bomb. The major upgrade you're looking for on this is Firebrand, since we can apply the dot on each target hit. Otherwise, Dyad for a 15% AP boost for 2 seconds is an excellent choice. For the Miner, I would take Power Scaling or Crit Chance for extra damage. Next, we'll talk about the Downward Power Strike, Bloodblade. Bloodblade is our most important sustainability. This ability allows us to stay alive in situations where most players would die. You can full heal yourself in three casts of this ability, though most of the time, one blood blade is enough to heal almost half of your HP. This is huge. Using this ability when needed is the only way we can solo invasion boss fights and swarm kite huge amounts of mobs. For Bloodblade's major upgrades, I would look towards Dyad for the AP boost over 2 seconds, or Firebrand for extra damage. For Miners, I would recommend Power Scaling or Crit Chance, though you could take Resource Cost Reduction if you don't have those available. Next, let's talk about the Horizontal Power Strike, Armbreaker. Armbreaker deals insane damage to both single and AoE targets. This will be your main source of damage. On top of the incredible damage, it will also slow attacks of monsters hit by 30% for 5 seconds. This effectively lowers the overall damage dealt from monsters by 30%. With all monsters having slower attack animations, this makes dodging telegraphed abilities even easier. If you don't need any healing at the time, all of your rage should be dumped on Armbreaker. For Armbreaker's major ability, I would take Bloodthirsty while leveling, as the heal it gives is extremely useful while swarm kiting. Otherwise, at endgame, take Firebrand for even more damage. For the minor upgrades, take Power Scaling or Crit Chance. You can also take resource cost reduction if you don't have the others available. Next, we'll go over the ultimate, Tectonic Shift. Tectonic Shift deals crazy amounts of damage in a huge radius. On top of this, it builds the stagger bar for all enemies hit very quickly. Adding the unique Godstone Major allows us to generate 60 rage over the course of the ult, resulting in a ton of extra DPS when spending this extra rage on power strikes. Use this every time it's up, and make sure to spend all your rage so you're benefiting from each pulse. For the major upgrade on Tectonic Shift, take the Unique, which generates 15 rage per pulse over 4 pulses, equaling to 60 rage regenerated on cast. For the Miner, since it's such a long cooldown, you want to take cooldown reduction as a priority. Otherwise, if you don't have it available, power scaling or crit chance is okay. Next, we'll talk about the Weapon Throw, Foe Seeker. This ability alone is what makes the Blade Master tank a force to be reckoned with. This ability triggers even if it shows it's on cooldown, so long as you hit an enemy directly with your sword throw. The ability portion that requires the cooldown to be up only works and activates when you hit the ground with your weapon, creating an AoE shockwave affecting all targets hit. This ability generates threat, which keeps monsters focused on you rather than your party. If you spam this ability, Essence Mage tanks will never be able to pull aggro off of you. The unique major, Commander's Cross, changes the entire playstyle of the Blade Master tank. With this unique generating between 5 and 15 rage per trigger, 
This is depending on how many enemies are hit, up to three total. You can, within seconds, fill your entire rage bar back to full. With this, you're now able to spam power strikes at a frequency that no other class can. Rage equals DPS. And now that you can regenerate rage at an inordinate amount, your DPS will skyrocket. On top of all of this, you're generating shield at a rate that no other ability can on the Blade Master tank, allowing us to squeeze out a ton of extra survivability. This unique major is an absolute must. For Foe Seeker's major upgrade, as I've hinted at, you need to get the unique for it, Commander's Cross. This generates 5 rage and 35% AP as shield per target hit. For the miners, I would take power scaling or crit chance as this ability does a lot of damage. Next we'll talk about Master Strike, Rupture. Due to the Master Strike's low damage and time that it takes to activate, I don't recommend using it. And this will be more apparent later in the video when you see the rotation and effect. So we will be skipping this Godstone. That concludes our Godstone section of this guide. And before I get into putting all these abilities in action with our rotation, let me quickly highlight the most important aspects of our Godstones. Next, we'll talk about how to squeeze Rage Regeneration out of our Godstones. Commander's Cross on our Weapon Throw needs to be spammed every time we no longer have enough Rage to activate Power Strikes. Use this until your Rage is at or near full. Then, dump all of your Rage on Power Strikes, then rinse and repeat. In addition to this, Use your ultimate to generate even more rage, as well as activating your fast footworks major every 30 seconds for even more rage regeneration. Next, we'll bring up how to pull healing from the godstones we've talked about. Always be mindful of your health bar. If you find yourself between 50 and 75% total health, Spend your Rage on Blood Blade to heal back to full. You can also overheal, effectively increasing your max health for a very short amount of time, usually about a second or so before the additional health drops off. Finally, we'll talk about how to pull damage from our Godstones. I want to remind you of your top damaging ability, Armbreaker. You should be spending all of your rage on this ability so long as you don't need to spend any rage on healing at the moment. This is your bread and butter for dishing out tons and tons of damage. Now it's time to put everything together. Let's talk about the rotation. At the start of every fight, dump your entire rage bar on Armbreaker. This will start the fight with a huge burst of DPS, follow up with your ultimate, if available, as well as your fast footwork major upgrade to start supplementing extremely quick rage regeneration. You're then going to start spamming your weapon throw with both arms until your rage bar is near full. Once full, check your health bar, cast blood blade if you need to top off health, Otherwise, spend all your rage on Armbreaker. Once you've depleted your rage, rinse and repeat all the rage regeneration tactics that are available. Most of the time, this involves only throwing weapons due to the ult and fast footwork major being on cooldown. And that is everything. We've gone over all the Godstone selections, including major and minor upgrades for each. We've gone over the tools available to regenerate rage at an insane amount. We've talked about our healing capabilities, our incredible damaging abilities, and how to put this all together in a followable rotation. All that I've covered today, if applied, makes the Blademaster tank 
one of the, if not the most powerful solo class in the game. You can dish out crazy amounts of damage due to our insane speed at regenerating raids. Your threat generation is higher than any Essence Mage tank, allowing us to hold aggro consistently, and your sustain allows you to heal and solo content that others would die doing. I encourage you to play with other Godstone upgrades to see if you can squeeze even more DPS out of the Blademaster tank and beat my kill times on the solo invasion bosses. If you manage to do so, please share your results in the forum post located below in the description. I've yet to find any class, let alone other Blademaster tanks, that can beat my solo kill speeds on invasion bosses with these tactics. Boasting the overall damage output and survivability that Blademaster tanks have with this setup. Until someone proves otherwise, I truly think that Blademaster tanks are the most powerfully consistent class in the game. If you found this guide useful and want to give back in some way, give the video a like as it helps the video show up for others who are interested in Zenith content. If you want to see all these mechanics that I've shown today in action and want to offer even more support for myself, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash where I solo unheard of endgame content and show off what anyone is capable of if you push your class to its limits. Thanks for watching, enjoy the rest of the day, and I'll see you later, Zenithians.